what about the animals? How could you possibly switch from wanting to protect these animals and wanting to save lives and not contribute to murder when, and just immediately erase all of that just for your own skin health. If it's as bad as you're saying, like, do I want to subject myself to the nonsense? Do I have to watch? Oh, right. You did this. Oh. Today is a big video. It's a video that I have. So wait, if she's no longer vegan, is she gonna be eating her cat in the background? Is that what's gonna happen? She's like, my guys, look, I've decided to be accepting and, and not be vegan anymore. And that means if I wanna eat my cat, it's gotta be a judgment-free environment, guys. You can't judge me. Only the stars will judge me. Is this is this what's gonna happen? I'm sad because she's pretty though. I don't mean to simp, but like, this is hurtful to me in in many many ways. Wanted to make for a while, and when I share things on Instagram like breakfast I'm eating or little tips and tricks on nutrition or anything, I'm getting lots and lots of questions on can you talk about veganism again? first started the channel maybe around three maybe even four years ago now i had videos about why we shouldn't drink milk and and vegan activism videos and i was very much so that vegan who was like oh no you really don't want to be sitting next to me at the thanksgiving table she is aware of the ethical atrocities that are committed you know the rights violations entailed in commodifying sentient beings Oh, oh no. How the times have changed. Now fuck the animals. Now completely fuck all. I don't give a shit anymore. Yeah, now how the times have changed. Once I gave a shit about the rights of other sentient beings, now oh, how the times have changed. Fuck them all. Because they uh, spiritual, right? Right? So I just want to invite you to listen with an open ear and an open heart, most of all. And the irony of an open heart. When you know what happens, you know what happens to those individuals. You know their rights have to be violated. There's no morally relevant difference between humans and other animals that would justify stripping them of their rights, commodifying them, doing all these things to them. And you are asking me and other vegans to listen with an open heart. Know that the beauty of the human experience is that we are all different and we're all unique. So are other animals. So are other animals. And you know what? You're, you're so right. There are some humans, they've got this beautiful, unique experience where they want to uh, bludgeon other humans to death. So beautiful. Like, they just, you know, it's like in their personal preference that it's just oh they just have this internal desire to kill people and it's just i think it's so beautiful you know it's just like so unique and i think we should respect that you know i think we should just respect you know when others wish or do things that actively violate the rights of others yeah but, oh sure Sure. Maybe some of the things I'm saying today might trigger you and maybe Hell you yeah. won't agree with me. And you might have the facts and the, yeah. the essays and the yeah. studies ready to fight and to argue and debate. Yeah. And that's wonderful. And I'll see you in the <laughs> comments. But I don't have to tell you, right? Let's try to stay polite and, and remember that this human experience is really about love. Exactly. It's about love. So you don't directly pay for the exploitation and killing of others because that's not love what are you doing i'm so f done with people being like we just need to be more loving and accepting while they try and justify atrocious f behavior what so I totally invite healthy debates in the comments. We can debate if you'd like, and I will demonstrate how your version of love would lead to complete absurdities. Absurdities? Absurdities. <laughs> can you demonstrate the morally relevant difference between humans and other animals that would justify this atrocity and express on any level how you can be a loving individual, how you can, you know, the, the human experience encompassing this love while 
you go out and engage in that behavior. I, I'd love it. Like, can you please? Information that you share if you want to dive deep. That's awesome. I love that. And I mean, I appreciate you, you coming across sounding like you're being open-minded, but please remember what you, you already know and what you are excusing. And we don't need to dive deep to know that that's wrong. I don't need to dive deep to know that stabbing a human is a bad thing to do. Like, I don't need to dive deep to know that if I got your cat and kicked them in the head until they died, that would be a bad thing to do. Or if I paid someone else to kick them in the head until they died, it would be a bad thing to do, just like it would be a bad thing to do if I paid for someone to slit the throat of an animal so that I could have them in my sandwich. We're diving deep when we try and make excuses for why that's acceptable. You would not think it were loving if you were the victim in that situation. It is not loving. It is not accepting. It's discriminatory. It's horrific. My hormones or my adrenal glands, my stress response, that something started to switch and I started to get this insane cystic acne all over my face. I want to mention something, right? I know she's here to talk about her experience and everything, but imagine like why I'm no longer like anti-murder or why I'm no longer against eating dogs or why I'm no longer like anything that, you know, that has a strong moral stance. And then someone starts talking about their acne. <laughs> I've been there. I had really horrific acne, you know, until about 18, weirdly like, till like about six weeks no, six months after being vegan, it, it really calmed down. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. You know, I think I was lactose intolerant and uh, dairy is one of those things that they recommend not to consume if you uh, you have acne. And yeah, well, never had the best skin. It's only recently, for some reason, started to be okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's just so weird to be bringing this up. Do you know what I mean? We're talking about now paying for the exploitation and killing of once sentient beings and we're talking about acne <laughs> oh, carry on it was embarrassing i wasn't even much of a makeup wearer i remember going to the mall going to sephora letting them get me all this makeup and try it on and i was kicking my face before videos i was feeling so embarrassed to even leave the house and oh my god if you're dealing with acne i'm sending you a huge hug I dealt with it for years and got bullied for it. It wouldn't come into my discussion about why it's then justified for me to exploit and kill other sentient beings. Maybe you don't conclude from this that, you know, this is something that led you to this, but it shouldn't even be included in this video. We're talking about animals <laughs> having their rights stripped from them. And I, d I don't know, it's just very inappropriate. You know what I mean? The female body to my understanding now, benefits greatly from animal fats, from real fats. Yeah, the real fat thing. What was what, so like, fat is not real if it's not like from a, I don't understand. Please don't, please, I please. It was backfiring on me 100% because my blood sugar was flip-flopping. My body's going into this emergency mode thinking that it's starving, which causes insulin resistance, which means when I do consume food after so many hours of not eating throughout sleep, 12 hours, you know, not eating when I first wake up until noon or something crazy like that, one o'clock, I don't understand what this has got to do with like not consuming the bodies and secretions of animals. Like if you've got these issues, you can work around them within a plant-based diet. You just have to make those changes within it. I don't understand what the bloody hell she's talking about. You're just talking, what? Did she like link any like studies or something? They're just YouTube videos. They're just YouTube videos, raw dairy sources, liver pills. Wait, is she selling? She's f selling them. She's selling liver pills. I think she's gonna tell me that it's justified to pay for the exploitation and killing of other sentient beings because she got acne that wasn't even in like anything to do with, you know, then having to include the bodies of like these animals that she couldn't empirically prove, but she did it anyway because spots on face. And I went 
to holistic nutrition school, but I'm totally not an expert, you all. I am learning every day something yeah, new, and yeah, there's always yeah. going to be contradicting information. Yeah, but the thing is, when you find contradicting information, you can look at something called the hierarchy of scientific evidence and then kind of like contrast them with another because you're saying all these claims. Where did you see these claims? Were they in an article written by somebody? Was it like some sort of study that was conducted? What were the variables? Were they, you know, were the control variables? Stuff like that. Like that's yeah. There's conflicting evidence for everything. There's probably conflicting evidence that supports the why all the positives of why you should murder humans well, well there's evidence for it oh there's conflicting some people say it's fine depending on what you're looking for so i had to really just make a decision and and decide to try just to try she said depending on what you're looking for it's like she was looking for an excuse to start including their bodies why do you just have to try if someone told you that you could have cured your, your acne by killing your cat, would you have just tried? Would you? Take, take away the uh, personal element to it. Like, would you have tried it if it were a random cat? Oh, you, someone told me, like, cats are just, you know, they're just really good for acne. I just had to try. I just, I just took a stray cat from the... I just, I just yeeted them there and then. I just had to try. Did you have to try? Did you? No! I'm going to start supporting my body for my hormones. So the first thing I did was get my gut tested. I mean, at and least you bloody did that, hey? after getting my gut tested, I realized, holy moly, this is what's happening. Why did I have a long list of vegetables that I should be avoiding? And why did I have a great list, long, pretty long list, a substantial list of animal foods that I should be integrating for my specific gut bacteria? Think about it. What animals do people typically eat? Pigs, cows, chickens, turkeys, ducks. That's kind of it, like duck rarely as much. And then you have like milk, eggs. And then you have these whole list of plants. Like there's like tens, thousands, like way more than that. Sorry, it's a ridiculous number of edible plants. And again, if you have a gut problem, it is the case that there are some foods that you're not going to be able to digest. And that once you've sorted those gut problems, you'll be able to eat them again, probably. According to what you, you needed to consume these like these these the flesh and the secretion of of these animals i don't i don't know oh is it in the youtube video is that where the evidence is <laughs> oh god it's just it's just ridiculous it really i cannot wait for people to look back and just see how absurd this is that we cared about animals that little that a woman could come on youtube and say guys i've got acne i read somewhere that paying for animals to be killed and exploited would help me get rid of my acne. And then she can get 6.8 thousand likes. I cannot wait for that to be looked back at and thought, oh my God, we cared that, we, we considered animals that little? I cannot wait. So it was telling me that I need to include eggs, that I need to include butter. I according to what? Fish and others. Acc so according like, to oh, what? Oh no, what am I going to do? And at that point, I was very much so vegan uh, for according, health, according for the environment, what? and for the animals. Like, how could I do this? How could I betray? <laughs> vegan for, the last thing I mention is actually what veganism is for. <laughs> Trying though. I know, I tried so hard, guys. I tried really hard. It's just so hard. The acne was just too much. Like, and the reason I'm mocking this is, right, I was the most acne ridden person I knew. It was a massive thing for me growing up self-esteem. It's only recently that my skin has been kind of better. I've got loads of like scars still. Like I get the few like blackheads and everything now. And you know, it's like, I know the struggle, but it would never ever entail. Like if someone told me, oh, you could clear all your acne tomorrow. All you have to do is pay for an animal to be stabbed. Fuck that. Because true self-love is going, yeah, I, I have acne, right? And there may be some problems like with my digestion. It might be genetics, it might be hormonal, you know, maybe I should go get checked out and see if I can work within a system where that doesn't entail violating the rights of others. I can do that, but it would never mean that suddenly I can because true self-love is accepting that, you know, it's okay to have freaking acne. It is okay. I'll never forget that day, like being in the store and feeling like I was stealing just by like having eggs in my cart, like everybody watching me. <laughs> she also said she was on a raw vegan diet, so if she's calorie restricting on a raw diet, it's feasible that high fat meals could make her feel nice. Yeah, that's the thing, like, and with raw dieting, like raw vegan, 
it's really hard to get all those calories. Like you do have to eat quite a lot. So it'd be really easy to probably under eat. It's fucking acne. Like the, if people have a problem with it, that's their problem. It's not your problem, okay? It was really on my skin. I just wish I could like look back at myself and be like, stop wasting your time trying to get rid of it. You're only stressing yourself out more. You're worried that you're gonna get a spot tomorrow. It's gonna be horrible. Then what happens? You do like you're just fixating on it. You think you're horrific looking. And like I just wish I could have just told myself it'd be fine and it wouldn't matter. And just thinking of the self-centeredness of this. This is supposed to be someone who's spiritual and, you know, the beauty of it, you know, talks about love. Like she opened this talking about the, the importance of love. Yet here she is, like this is the, the, this is tremendously awful. Just because I was eating a little bit more balanced, my blood sugar levels, because I started testing. What you, so you can eat more balanced without including the, the, the bodies and secretions of animals. Like you could look at those things that are within the egg, within the butter, and just incorporate those. That would be demonstrating to you, not that there's this magical component in an egg, that, oh, I just must have this, I must have the egg. It's like, no, there is, like an egg has certain properties. Maybe there was a property that was not existent in my diet that I've now incorporated via doing this. There's not some magical component about being, you know, from the cloaca of an animal, or being from the tit of an animal. If there is, can you show me the strong evidence suggesting that there is? Testing myself, my blood sugar levels were evening out. I was no longer intermittent fasting. I was eating as soon as I woke up in the morning, which is also very important for everyone, but especially the women's body, the woman's body, hormones. If you're dealing with PCOS, stop skipping breakfast. Eat breakfast, eat. If you're not hungry in the morning, you can go hours and hours without eating in the morning. That's not a good sign, actually. It shouldn't be worn as a badge of honor. It's a sign that your hormones are off. So she's talking as well about other things that she wasn't doing that were like, harmful and not aiding the issue that have nothing to do again with veganism like <laughs> oh my god I said all right i'm gonna follow this one again and this time i'm gonna integrate some meat and the reason why i decided to integrate some meat i'll tell you right now a little bit of the science not all protein is created equal i repeat <laughs> not all protein is created equal i've got to do it this is the thing this is what pisses me off a lot she says i'm not an expert yeah like she's like oh well not all proteins created equal and she's gonna make all these claims about like how she needed this specific protein, isn't she? <laughs> right. When we look at the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, it states that a plant-based diet is suitable for all stages of life, okay? If not all protein is created equal and you're going to say, okay, well, this specifically the, the animal protein is what's needed, then how are they uh, concluding that it's suitable for all stages of life? So are you going to state that, you know, when we, we look at the uh, meta-analyses and, and they are concluding that it is, are you saying that there should be an asterisk underneath that? Oh, unless you have acne and hormone problems, then yeah, like that, you know, not all protein is created equal. You need the specific protein. Like, please don't tell me this is what's gonna happen. A little mad at me, but this is the truth according to what I've learned. It is not enough <laughs> for to food to just contain protein. You need to be able to digest that protein and you need to be able to absorb that protein. And this is where the problem comes in with plants. Plants like nuts, seeds and grains and soy and beans, yes, they contain protein, but the very nature of these plants when we look at them scientifically is to resist digestion. So we cannot absorb the protein. It is not bioavailable to the human body. No. <laughs> what the f have you read? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> so you know all those vegan bodybuilders yeah just not absorbing any of the protein no the pro <laughs> i i've been going to the gym and i don't know what i've been doing i must have been like eating like corpses or something because like i've been digesting pro i don't know how of course there are ways we can change it preparation of these foods changes the way our bodies digest them genetics changes the way so wait Changes the way we digest them. I thought you just said that we can't digest them. So after five years of veganism, my body was not absorbing and assimilating and synthesizing these plants. And but, but then they were the other five years? Are you... What, a donut? What, ding dong? Cows have three stomachs. So when they eat all of this greenery, that's why they have those... Yes, because they're ruminants. They're eating grass. What the f***? Let me share a little bit of insight. A lot of the vegan ideology is set up around that superficial set of ethics, which is protecting animals, the environment, wildlife. But all of that really falls apart when you look below the surface. A meatless Aww. diet is not a bloodless diet. Men <laughs> Considering 
the definition of veganism is the avoidance where possible and practicable. It is implied in the definition that there is this understanding that it's not bloodless, you ding dong. This is the same with principles that we occupy, like within like modern civilized society, that there's an understanding that what we do will not be bloodless, will not have no effect whatsoever, but we try and minimize that. We try and, you know, consider other human beings in our practices to ensure that we can, yeah, ensure that that's minimized as much as possible. Just, you're straw manning veganism completely. Oh, yeah, like, it's not bloodless. No f***ing shit. We're talking about industrializing things so that we can provide food, you know, um, clothing, things like that, shelter to human beings, like 8 billion of them. Of course, in our industries, it's going to be entailed that there's going to be some harm to individuals. That doesn't suddenly give you a justification to do more, to actively harm individuals. It is the case, <laughs> like, I literally have to bring this up. Road accidents happen all of the time. There are many human victims of vehicles, of road accidents. Doesn't suddenly mean that because it is the case that humans are killed, that we have the justification to start purposefully mowing them down. Many animals lose their lives in the process of farming vegetables. Birds and oh butterflies are poisoned by the chemicals. Rabbits and mice are run over by tractors. Vast fields of monocrop <laughs> she she's vegetables a point? displace the animals that once lived on that native land. I'm gonna read you something that I read online Why does she from think a registered this is a point? her name is Diana Rogers. She says, what is the most moral way to eat? If you're truly looking to cause the least harm to animals, be the most sustainable and ethically responsible with your food consumption, then your lens has to open a bit to include some other questions. If you know that animals will die for your soylent, is it okay to drink it? If you know that the spraying of non-organic bananas also means schools and local homes are also sprayed with toxic chemicals, causing incredible illness and birth defects is it still okay to eat them it's the case we need to consume food as animals right we need to consume food so we will consume food in the most sustainable the most ethical way possible that is what we constantly do as societies you know trying to improve we make systems that try to improve upon you know the consideration to other individuals within that society or outside of that society if you're a truly civilized uh, society because it is the case that like say you know the uk for example that there are practices that we engage in that like make our society look great you know we're not you know like plastic we don't have a plastic problem let's just dump it somewhere else that's not good <laughs> like that that's displacing you know individuals in other countries they're just exporting it and dumping it over there that's not a good or, or a considerate thing to do okay so we look at that and be like that's not how we should function that's not what we should do it is the case that in every industry, there are human deaths as well. No, it's not good when humans are killed in every given industry, in like, you know, um, work-related accidents. That doesn't entail a rights violation though. That just means the practices need to be improved. There needs to be more health and safety regulations brought in. You know, is that company holding itself accountable to ensure that that doesn't happen again to the best of their ability? Okay, well now, yeah, now this thing is as ethical as it can be because it doesn't entail the rights violations. They're not put in unsafe, uh, you know, um, environments whereby, oh, well, it's very likely that they are going to get into an accident. That's why when you look at like crop deaths and stuff like that, if you look at the literature by Fisher and Lamy, they go through these methods that we could implement in order to avoid crop deaths, i.e. Uh, indoor farming or vertical farming, things like that those things that would, would, would aid without involving those animals trying to, to minimise that as much as possible. These things are things that, <laughs> that make a society better when they consider others. But we're not going to make those changes for a long time until other industries actually consider other animals. But when we have industries built upon their commodification, got a long way to go, haven't we? you know, considering you were just talking about like crop deaths and everything, what do you think those hundreds of billions of land animals are eating? They are more resource intensive. So all these problems that you're talking about, they are worse when we add animals into the, the picture. If you see it as a problem, you'd still be vegan. It's quite clear, but you've demonstrated a couple of times in this video, you don't know what you're talking about. Questions. We will not see better solutions. If you equate the life of a rabbit- or Well, we've answered, we've asked these questions and then we found the answer by actually looking at empirical data, unlike yourself. Like, it's all well to ask these questions, but like, actually answer them. And you're, you're not coming up with an answer. Like, and when you do, it's like, according to what? According to what?
animals from our food system could cause more harm than good. Here's why. The connection between nutrition and ecosystem health is starting to make some headway into mainstream media, right? However, we've allowed corporate interest, big food, flawed science, clickbait media, and naive celebrities to steer us away from what a truly nutrient-dense, ethical and sustainable and regenerative food system really is. The mantra that all meat is bad influences how we're training dietitians, shaping our dietary guidelines, designing school lunch policies, and funding nutrition-related research. Meat is being vilified as causing cancer, heart disease, diabetes, yet there are literally no solid studies to back this up. Meanwhile, Silicon- Wait. Does she, re she's speaking that out. Does she really believe that? Silicon Valley has invested millions in highly processed meat alternatives with the assumption that engineering our oh proteins Oh my God, this is, just this is just now a conspiracy theory. Out. Grazing animals, the, like, restoring land. Oh my, I like can't like. Ground. That talks about regenerative farming. And oh how my God. Hitting one button and causing so much more destruction than you possibly could. Like, this, according to what? like me to do vegan because of my videos. And when I started to share that I was eating eggs on Instagram and, you know, cheese and butter and all different things, women were saying, hey, well, I was vegan because you are. <laughs> so can you please tell me why you're not vegan anymore? Because maybe there's something I should learn. So here oh, I am. Oh, please do not take her advice. Like, like what is this? Any of those symptoms I was talking about, PMS, irritability, foggy mind, hypo hypothyroidism, acne, inability to lose weight, maybe, and you're, and you're with the vegan life, perhaps it's time for you to consider going another route. And getting your gut tested is a wonderful way to do that. I will be sharing a little bit about- Yeah, get your gut tested, but then don't follow this nonsense of what she's- Oh my God, no, I just can't take it anymore. I, 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 I actually can't, just make me angry. She has no real evidence to support the claim that, you know, being non-vegan would help her acne, okay? But yeah, she started implementing the bodies and secretions of exploited and, uh, you know, killed animals so that she can rid of her, her acne. It was a, uh, you know, aesthetic thing for her. Then she's kind of seemingly framed this entire worldview where we're being lied to. This, the science is just, you know, all this science that's saying plant-based eating is right. No, that's just some kind of like uh, agenda whereby they're trying to make us think that, you know, the, the flesh of animals like eating that is just so bad. But no, this, like she's just gone down this weird rabbit hole. She even said herself she's gone down the rabbit hole. So I I hope nobody will take her seriously, but unfortunately there'll be, be people who will. Oh, wow, I did not expect that to be that bad. <laughs>